Before we jump into some of the more intensive time series decks that's really going to tie together a lot of the con concepts and ideas that we've talked about so far in this lesson, I just want to take a few minutes, 10 or so, to quickly go through a few useful date type functions that you can also use in DAX. And for a lot of these, we're going to be using them in the context of building a date or calendar table. And of course, this is an exercise that we've already done using the Power Query Editor. I've covered this topic on my YouTube channel. I prefer that people use the Power Query Editor for building a date table, but I just kind of want you to know about some of these useful uh, functions that are out there in case you ever need to do some date logic within tables of your data set. So what we're going to do here is we're going to jump right in by just building a couple of very quick but useful measures. And the first of these measures I'm going to call start date. And this is going to utilize a DAX function called first date. And the first date function works a lot like the min function. Uh, that we talked about in an earlier lesson, and that it's just going to pull the minimum date from a date field that we select. So it's just going to pull the earliest date out of that date field uh, and, and aggregate that so that that's the value that we can like throw into a card or something. And I'm going to show you in just a second how that evaluates. So first date is the function. We're going to point this at the date column from our sales fact table. And then I'm just going to throw a quick card onto my report page here. And I'm going to throw my start date measure into that so that you can see the start date evaluates to January 1st, 2022. And if I go over to my sales data set, I can quickly confirm that by just sorting in ascending order my sales fact table. And there we can see January 1st, 2022. And while I'm here, I might as well see what the last date is. And you can see it's September 30th, 2023, even though it's April 10th, 2023, when I'm recording this. Yes, there are dates in the future in this sales fact table. That's because it's for a fake toy company. Uh, so, you know, take that for what it is. You're going to see dates in the future in this tutorial because it's a fake data set. But I digress. Let's go ahead and build another new measure to confirm that September 30th, 2023 end date. We're going to call this new measure end date, and we're going to use a function called last date, which is just like max, uh, you know, whereas first date is kind of like min, last date is really similar to max. And it's going to find the maximum date value from our sales date column. So we've got our end date now. Let's go ahead and throw that over into another card and replace the start date measure with end date. And there's our September 30th, 2023 end date. Now that we have a first date from our sales fact table and a last date from our sales fact table, let's go ahead and build a calendar that we can use to capture those dates and everything in between. So here we're gonna head up to modeling and we're gonna do something that we haven't actually done so far in these DAX lessons. We're not gonna be building a measure. We're not gonna be building a new column. We're gonna be adding a whole new table to our data, set, to our data model using DAX. So we're gonna create a new table. And so far it looks just like everything else that we've created. It's looking for some type of you know, script for a, a, a DAX function. So let's go ahead and call this new table calendar and we're going to use a function called calendar and within this calendar function you can see it's looking for a start date and an end date to serve as the range for that calendar. So we're going to use our start date measure and our end date measure and we're going to save that calendar and immediately you can see that a new calendar table appears over here right above the dates table that we're going to pretend doesn't exist in this lesson. So there's our calendar table. And if we head over here to our data view, you can see I've got a calendar a new calendar table with a date field that runs from January 1st, 2022, all the way down to September 30th, 2023. And now that we have a date column and a range, we're just gonna use this to build out the rest of our DAX calendar table. So I'm going to start by adding, let's go with a year column. And we're going to use the year function here and we're going to point it at our calendar date column. And since I'm going to be calling this column a lot while I add new fields to this table, I'm just gonna copy and paste calendar date. And when we commit this, you can see that it's now adding whatever the year is for the date column that we specified. So we've got 2022 for all of that year. And when we flip over to 2023, 
you can see that the values changed from 2022 to 2023. Next, I'm going to add a month column to this data set. I'm going to call it month num, and I'm going to use the month function, which is just going to return the numeric representation of whatever month uh, is in the given date over here. So for January, I've got one. For February, I've got two. And for March, I've got three, and so on down all the way through 12. Next, I'm going to add a quarter num field or a quarter number field, and I'm going to use the quarter function for this, and I'm going to point it also at my calendar date. There it goes. Calendar date field, and I'm going to go ahead and close that off. And now I'm going to have one for January, February, March, two for April, May, June, and so on and so forth for all four quarter intervals within the year. And if I even want to grab the specific day, I can go in and add a day function to grab the specific day of the month associated with any given date over here. There are also ways of adding, you know, whatever uh, call, whatever date I want to, um, and kind of bypassing some of this. So, uh, if I want today's date, it's as easy as just creating a column, and I'll call it today. And we're going to use the today function. We're not going to put anything inside of it. We're just going to open and close a parenthesis, and it's going to pull today's date. Which, as I said, even though this uh, data set goes through September 30th, 2023, it's actually only April 10th, 2023 when I'm recording this. Or if we want to make sure that we're also capturing the timestamp from our computer, we can create a column that uses the now function, and we're just going to open and close that the same way that we did with today. And now we're capturing today's date, but we're also capturing whatever the timestamp is on, on our computer. If you're wondering how we get yesterday's date, there are actually a couple of different ways of doing it. If we want yesterday's date, the easiest way is just to look at our calendar today column and subtract one from it. And now we've got April 9th, 2023, or we can go ahead and take this opportunity to jump into another really useful um, DAX function called date add. And for this example, what we're going to do is we're going to call the date add function. We're going to use the same column calendar date or, or today rather. And we're going to subtract from that negative one. In other words, we're going to go back in time one day. And now when I commit this, I want to point one thing out here because this could trip people up and it definitely tripped me up the first few times that I ran into this. This looks really straightforward, right? We're just going to subtract one day from today. However, when I go over here, you can see that I have nothing that comes up. It's completely blank. If I click on the column, it says one distinct value, which is blank for everything. So I want to go ahead and point your attention over here to the calendar table that we've built and point out these little carrots that are next to some of the columns that we've created. This indicates that there is a date hierarchy within each of these columns. So if I open date, you can see there's a date hierarchy and I've got your quarter month day. This means that while I have technically specified the column, I haven't specified the exact date component from which I'm subtracting one day. And you can see here, I've got today, date hierarchy, year, quarter, month, day. So we're going to go back up here to where we called today. And real quickly, we're just going to say that we want to select the date component within today. And we're going to subtract a day from that so that we can get that April 9th, 2023. So whenever there is a hierarchy within your column, you will notice these additional options that are kind of shortcuts for these different date parts appear. And you do have to specify which one you want when utilizing date add. And you can see it went blank again. And I'm going to go back in and just add the date back. So you've got today.date and we're subtracting one day from that. Or if you decide, you know, what I really would like to be able to find are the number of days between this the dates in this date column and today's date, there's also a function that we can use for that. And we're going to add a new column and this function is going to be called date diff, meaning date difference. 
And for this column, we're going to utilize the date diff function. And you can see that this is looking for us to specify a starting period for the difference, an ending period for the difference, and then what kind of date interval we wanna use, something like days or months or years. So let's go ahead and add a new date diff column. And we're going to use the date column from our calendar table. And we're going to use our today column from our calendar table. And we're going to look for the number of days between those two dates. And you can see when I execute the date diff function, I'm now, I'm now just seeing whole numbers over here that represent the number of days between January 1st, 2022 and today. And you can see that as my date column moves forward in time, this number shrinks because the number of days between my date column and today is, of course, shrinking. And so we can also even, you know, if we don't want to see days, if that's like too granular, we can also say instead, show me the number of months between January 1st, 2022 and uh, April 10th, 2023. And here it's showing me 15 months, which makes sense, right? We've got a January date plus add a year and about three additional months to get to April. Makes perfect sense. I use date diff uh, functions all the time for finding the number of days or intervals between a starting period and an ending period. Another function that honestly I've never used before, but in preparing for this lesson, I just kind of stumbled across. I think it's relatively new. That's kind of cool is uh, there's also a, a function that's been added uh, either more recently or just somehow I missed it that allows you to calculate in Power BI the number of work days. Uh, between two different intervals. So let's cal calculate the number of net work days between our date column and our calendar table. And I missed it. There we go. Calendar date. And let's calculate the number of net work days between these dates and our today column. And it's going to work very similar to our date diff column. It's just going to, you know, look at the starting period and the inner and the ending period, and it's just going to roll up the number of work days using its internal logic for what represents a work day. And here it's just skipping over weekends. That's why you can see 331, 331 repeats, and then it goes to 330, 329, and you know it goes down five straight days in a row, and then it repeats again because weekends, and then it keeps kind of going, you know, along that pattern all the way into the present. So if you're just looking to quickly calculate work days, this could be a very useful function for you to use. I didn't know that it was a thing, was not surprised to discover it when I went to kind of, you know, brush up on my date functions for this video. Hope you find that useful. Next, we're gonna kind of jump into some of the more intense date time logic, and that is time intelligence functions. And we're gonna not focus so much on the functions over there as much as what you can do with them. So as usual, I'm gonna give you a list of all the functions we're gonna run through, but specifically, I'm gonna give you some good use cases that can help you execute time series problems that are common in business intelligence. I'll see you over there.